Well, we're back, and the rest of the world seems to be giving up on LK99, but not Brian and not me. There's still hope, and I don't know why everybody's such such naysayers out there, Brian. What in the world is going on? So, so there was a, 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 a new paper out from the Beijing National Lab, important institution, and they said that um, that transition temperature um, you know, up, you know, 127 degrees uh, Celsius, you know, above boiling point, there is this transition in something, a uh, copper, copper sulfide, right? So they, they did, okay, their theory is, okay, here, look, copper sulfide, there's a transition here, copper sulfide with larcanite, you know, the, the lead phosphate thing, that's most of what LK99 is, it has this transition up at, uh, you know, that the right temperature, right around the range. And then the, it had a kind of like superconductor like effect, where it resistance drops by a thousand, ten thousand times, which is uh, in science terms three to four orders of magnitude, right? right? So it's a nice big drop. Someone who doesn't know what they're doing would say, "Hey, that might be a superconductor like drop," right? Oh. But it doesn't get to the zero resistance thing, right? It doesn't get to zero resistance, right? So you don't get to zero resistance, not a superconductor. Right, so they're saying that fooled the uh, the the Korean scientists, right? So plausible explanation, if true, the thing that doesn't account for is that the Korean scientists originally said not superconducting in bulk form, right? So when you have a big block of this thing, it is not a superconductor. They said not a superconductor, but they say it has low resistance, ten to the minus six. And my seven uh, resistance level, right, which is something. But they said that the 10 to the minus 10, a thousand times less, 10 to the minus 11, where you're at superconductor, the threshold for superconductor of low resistance, they said that happens in a thin film. So you must do something called chemi chemical vapor deposition, where you create a little mist of stuff and it settles into a very thin film, like dew, you know, thinner than dew, you know, a little uh, uh, onto, the, uh, onto glass. Right. So that kind of really thin film, that's where they say there is a superconducting thing. I do not see the Beijing guys uh, do that. Right. And there's some other. Has um, anybody, have any of the other folks that have been trying to replicate, you know, done it with oxygen? We talked about oxygen yesterday yeah. uh, as, as the method and and or has anybody been putting this additional uh, process to it in order to before they test? So um, I have not seen papers with uh, chemical vapor, vapor deposition. This is all preprint stuff, where right. it's like not in an official journal. Everything is all in this, I'm tossing it out there and getting feedback kind of mode, right? So I haven't seen one with chemical vapor deposition. I think there may have been some uh, simulation stuff related to that. Um, but I haven't, I don't think I've seen experimental stuff. But I know deductively of the many labs doing stuff, the big labs have a chemical vapor deposition thing there. They would be doing that. How long that takes to set up, how long it takes to do it right, I have no idea. Okay. Right. So it, it is, uh, you know, it's in the computer chip making process, it's not an uncommon thing. Um, how long does it take to do a proper run of that? I don't know what that is. Right. The, the, the current stuff is a quick, you know, um, I make some powders, I, I grind it up with the pestle and stuff like that. It's that souffle making type thing, right? So they're trying to draw conclusions from this in that mode. Um, someone else pointed out that they, the LK99 patent discusses copper sulfide as an impurity, right? So they say, we know about copper sulfide. It is a contaminant in our process. So, so they're aware of it. Right. So not that they were completely unaware of it. Could they still make the mistake? Maybe. Right. Mm -hmm. But it all goes to, um, you know, a re you know, the other scientists are doing this reduction reasoning thing where they say, maybe you're an idiot this way. Maybe you're <laughs> an idiot this way. Or more than likely, maybe you made this mistake, maybe did that mistake, maybe this. So they're tossing out these various mistakes, which is basically saying, if they're true, if you are incompetent in some form, 
Right. So they they I mean they've gone with that reasoning based on your paper was rushed and sloppy. We don't think you know sigma doctors mean that. There was reasons, you know, internally why they rushed it out. You know, when I got fired, blah blah blah. There was it was a rush job. Yes. Right. So the paper had these flaws in them, but is it flawed because they don't know what they're doing, or it's flawed because it's rushed, right? Yeah. But they didn't get the patent out. So the guys who say, okay, you don't know the, your magnetism, right? The the U.S. guy from Maryland, the screen guy, he wrote an expert paper on diamagnetism versus superconductors back, you know, like twenty years ago. You know, the guy mentioned copper sulfide, right? So I don't think these guys made that rookie mistake. I don't okay. think, right? Could they have? Yeah, they could have, right? But, you know, having, I, I followed like a lot of science stuff, right? The cold fusion thing that talked to the people, I think that did not get a fair shake, right? They should have been more investigating into it. There's, you know, thing unexplained things there, which kind of like when you have an unexplained thing in science, right? You got to, that, that's, where things may be interesting, right? But if you if you say, okay, because, you know, simple explanation why I think, you know, something's wrong and it still persists, right? You should take a better look at it. Anyway, so um, this is a one-sided debate right now. Okay. Right? The original um, Korean researchers, they're saying we're working on a peer-reviewed publication. We're, uh, we're also working with uh, skeptics in Korea who are trying to prove us wrong there'll be papers peer review papers coming out end of this month or in september sometime right which could get delayed that's the target sure so it's all one side this is so that would be the non-rush paper where they say here's how we address all these points and we're not idiots or they come back and say okay i mean we're looking at under the hailstorm of stuff we've really looked at it and yeah we just grew up right <laughs> so they have to come up with their debate response right, right. now it's, it's, it's all one-sided you know you did this you did this you did this kind of thing right and brian, and brian are there other major labs uh that are still investigating people that have said that they are doing serious work that have not uh made any statement yet yeah yeah there have been argon national labs said we don't like the, the original paper we think it was sloppy but this is interesting important thing we're going to look into it to be sure. Okay. So Argon Labs has not come up with their thing. Other um, you know, major labs have said, yes, we're looking into it. No, you know, final conclusive statement. Maybe they never publish a conclusive statement. You know, if if other things end up falling out, there'd be no need to say, and here's our final paper. If someone if they, you know, refer to other paper right. that, that that trashed it. Yeah. So Princeton Labs, they said that they had uh made an error in the way that they did it, uh, mm -hmm. would they then potentially be going back to the drawing board and trying to do it again? Or have they made any statement about what their plan is? I I would presume that they're going to keep trying again. Okay. Right. That, um, you know, you want to be inclusive of it. If it eventually comes to the point where, you know, there's much peer reviewed things where, the original guys and a uh, definitive other source kind of like, okay, this is what the, the, the explanation is and here's conclusive and everything's all tied up in a bow. Right. Then they can say, okay, not worth my time. I, I trust um, Joe. Right? right. Joe did that work. I know he does good work. I'm not going to do any more. Right. I, I can't do any better than that. So it's over for me. Right. right. So that's a kind of uh, process it, where I believe that guy. If he does it, okay, I don't need to look anymore. But right now, it's kind of like it's an open question, and you know they're gonna at least have some, if not the, the top guy. They, maybe not everyone's on it. You know, maybe okay, you know, junior guy or you know, senior person, you can figure this out. We'll keep an eye on it. We'll see what's going on. But you know, yeah. So, but it's it's because it's again the potential holy grail, right? Right. That. You'd think you'd want to be pretty sure that, but, you know, or instead of you saying, yeah, it, it's, it's Indiana Jones didn't get it. It's, it's not it. I, I don't believe it. Those are the guys who, when their face melted, you know, they, 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 they took the blowtorch to their face. It, it was <laughs> obvious that they're just morons.
<laughs> all right. Well, all right then. We'll uh, so uh, we we promised to do this daily until it was decided one way or the other. Um, I'm going to caveat that just a little bit. We will come back tomorrow if there's something worthwhile to report. And we'll keep doing it daily as long as there's something worthwhile to report. But we have other news here. We want to talk about we want to talk about a little Tesla news here. Uh, you say that uh, there's something about the Chinese pricing of the Model 3 refresh. What do you want to talk about there? Yeah, so um, Ray from Tesla um, reported um, some Chinese reporting. May or might be accurate, but the, the key point that they said, which is uh, important for me, is that they said that the new refreshed uh, Model 3 would have a pricing of around 200,000 won. The current, if you go to the um, Tesla China uh, Tesla 3 order page, the lowest price is 231,000 uh, won, right? When you convert those things to US dollars, right? Then the current pricing is just over 30,000 US dollars, $30,500, my God. And then the new pricing will be $27,700, right? So that's like a 15% drop right. in price. Right. And it also puts it just a shade under the pricing of the BYD Han, the BYD Seal, you know, some of the major competitors that have higher volume because of lower pricing. Right. And it's only 11% percent over the 25k magic car price that everyone was talking about for the model two you know right. that, that happened. so gary black said, ah, 25k car i must have 25k car if this happens in september with mass production then china would be making you know 11 percent you know not quite the 25k car right but if there's you know some small subsidies from a chinese province or something like that you know, you're at 25k you of course you can get less than 25k right now in the U.S. and California and other places with subsidies, but you know, like a standard production price of twenty-seven k seven hundred, which the battery pricing tends to drop like ten percent, you know, in a normal year, right? Without supply demand issues, drop like ten percent every year. So next year we get the real twenty-five k car from a Model Three in China, right? So that that is a, a huge volume deal, especially when you look at those Arc Invest analysis of demand how much market you're addressing as you drop in price. Right. And China's pricing thing is you get to a substantial meat of the market. Like instead of only 20% or 15% of the market at 40K, um, 25, 30% of the market at um, 35K or 32K, you get to 50%, maybe more at the 27, 25K level. To get to like 80%, you can even get to like 15K. They are like really, really cheap cars. Uh, which that may be the Gen 2 for it. Right. So even with just improving the Model 3, getting, you know, saving your nickel and dimes and shaving off pricing and things like that, Tesla's getting to that 25K car. Assuming the, assuming the rumors are true. We have we want to make sure that we say that, that this yeah. is a rumor at this point. This is not a, an official statement by Tesla. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rumor if true, not investing advice. Yeah. All the other caveats. <laughs> so speaking of competition, though, um, I, I noticed that one of our other co-authors, Dr. Dr. Know-it-all, said this morning, he did a big video this morning talking about how the all the uh, competitors are failing. I mm -hmm. was actually just about to put out a video about how it looks to me like the competitors are finally getting it together, even though we see some failures here and there. I think the Cadillac uh, three hundred and fifty thousand dollar car is a joke. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they only need to sell a thousand a year to make that worthwhile. Uh, but it, to me, it doesn't even look that good. But but uh, on the other side of the coin, Volkswagen, you know, they're going to build six hundred thousand cars next year, and it looks like that's real. It looks like that's a real number. Um, you've got uh, a, you know Neo showing twenty one percent profits. You've got Rivian um, saying they'll be in profits next year and that uh, they've just raised uh, their their estimates for this year. I mean, there's quite a few cars that seem like they're doing okay right now. What do you think? Yeah, so um, yeah, uh, Rivian's in, you know, okay. Like they, they got the 50% growth. So I would say that they are not um, dying, but um, Volkswagen, you know, if you look at it, over a few years, you know, they had, you know, 400,000 K cars um, two or three years ago. 
and now they're at 600K. So it's not a, a substantial percentage move, right? Mm -hmm. Tesla in the same time went from 500,000 cars to nearly 2 million, right? right? BYD, for, just for their um, electric vehicles, you know, went from um, uh, I think 300,000 or 200,000 up to 1.3 million vehicles, okay. right? Yeah. So, so Volkswagen's fallen way behind. They used to be ahead of BYD and they fall way behind BYD. And going to 600K, that'd be a nice stabilization if it happens. Yeah. Um, but it's not. And then they're trying to replace, you know, before 10 million ICE cars. Right, right. Yes. And now they're down to like 8 million, right? So um, the fact that, you know, if the trend continues, maybe they're at 2 million you know, in, in 2030 or 2028 or something like that, you know, they need to do more um, to be what they are now or close to it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? No, I, oh, I would so, never suggest that Volkswagen is going to be back at 10 million ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not, not ever. But I think my point was more that VW and, and uh, even, you know, Ford, even with the mess, missteps they've had, General Motors with the missteps they've had, um, you know, there's a uh, a process here of getting it right, um, and uh, yeah, of, of of surviving, of being something right, post right, transition, right right. right, right, yeah. They're not, yeah, immediately imploding and having nothing, right? right. So, so that's that's good. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I just I was curious because again, it looks to me we we need the competition. It's not that it's not if you're gonna. I know you have a theory that maybe Tesla owns it all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I think that's always unrealistic in any business. I mean, quite frankly, uh, Xpeng or Shipeng, I guess if you pronounce it correctly, uh, Lee and and uh, and uh, 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 so, some of these other Chinese makers, BYD, yeah, BYD, and then the South Korean maker, you know, the, the, uh, Geely, you know, all, yeah, all Geely, guys, right? right. With their, so, so I, my MP theory is, though, is, though that, yeah. is that the, the Chinese guys should at least hold half of their own market, which, you know, could be 12 million cars, you right. know, out, out of the 25 million, 30 million cars, something like that. They should at least hold half of their market. Um, and, and then they could get, you know, 25% or more of the European market. Right. Um, so, so, you know, they would be substantial even in a Tesla takes most right. uh, situation, right? And then the other guys can survive, especially if they were to get, you know, a state support, which they should get, and, you know, get a lot of Tesla technology, mm, right? Yeah. Or, or, you know, like Toyota's trying to get it from BYD or, you know, someone else trying to get it from, from the other Chinese car makers, Um you know, maybe that's the way it works. Maybe Tesla doesn't come deal. I don't, I don't know, but um, if if they choose to get that um, other technology, they could because they they use always you know they're getting you know other tier suppliers to supply them with stuff anyway. They're assembling the vehicle, so what difference does it make? Right. Who did it? If you know, if you know, I did the whole the whole thing instead of much other guy, if if Tesla does the whole thing, they give them the skateboard. You know, you make your seats and, and do the other stuff. You know, there's there's a, a business to be had right there where they keep selling stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, Brian, thank you again for coming on board to talk about the LK99 and other things as well. And uh, mm -hmm. we will, again, do this again tomorrow if there is news that's worthy of doing. And uh, and uh, please hit like if this has been valuable to you to for us to do this daily program on the LK99 and please hit subscribe. Follow Brian into the next big future. <laughs> next, nextbigfuture.com is his science blog. It is worth you going on every single day to see uh, three, four, five. I think you average probably four or five uh, postings a day on your blog. Um, I'm not up to 10. Sometimes 10. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no. Yeah. And um and you'll, I think you'll enjoy uh, getting something out of that material every single day. And then uh, both of us are, of course, on Twitter, and we both have Patreon. So those things, uh, information will be below in the description. Brian, again, I thank you so much. Thanks, Randy. All right. And to all of you out there, it's been great talking to you. <laughs>